a couple of weeks ago, a viewer reached out to me and offered to send me some of the new plastic Kariskin models if I would convert one up as a Cornite Trader Guardsman for him and do a video on it. So of course, I said yes. I've always been a huge fan of Trader Guardsmen ever since seeing them first appear in the Lost in the Dam Codex 20 years ago or so, and I had a couple ideas for how to turn this loyal servant of the Emperor into a devolved servant of chaos. For this conversion, I wanted to represent a traitor who had recently turned from the light of the Emperor, but instead of devolving into a blood-crazed cultist who just charges forward screaming something about blood and skulls incessantly, displays his devotion to his new Dark Master through martial skill and battlefield effectiveness. To start with, I assembled the legs and torso as per the instructions. Generally speaking, I try not to alter these parts of a model too much, it's really a pain to modify and convert. Instead, I look to change things around the peripheries, like the arms, weapons, heads, things like that. I also take the time here to carefully cut off the Imperial Aquila on the chest piece. It might seem pretty obvious, but when converting Imperial models to Chaos, the Aquila's just gotta go. There is one major issue with this particular sculpt though, which is that the model is holding its Hellgun across its chest in a firing position, obscuring the torso and the majority of the helmet too. This wouldn't work for me, as my planned conversion relied on changing the head out pretty significantly, as well as attaching some random trinkets to its torso to show off its coronet allegiance. This of course meant that I'd need to significantly alter the pose, so I got my sharp X-Acto blade and carefully separated the shoulder pad from the lower arm. My plan here was to re-sculpt the majority of the upper arm and then place the shoulder pad on top of that. This was tricky though, as I need to remove a large amount of plastic under the shoulder pad I made this task a bit easier by using a pin vise to drill some pilot holes which would give my X-Acto blade some more purchase, but even then I had to be careful here to, well, not cut away too much, as well as not cut into my finger, which I did once actually. With that out of the way, I cut the arm down a little bit more, all the way to the elbow, and then built an armature to sculpt the new arm on top of with a paper clip. It might seem like a small detail here but I actually made sure to drill down the length of the arm instead of through it to ensure that I had enough surface area for the paperclip and superglue to bond together to the plastic. If I tried to go through instead, there's a good chance I wouldn't have enough purchase and the next steps would be kind of a pain and might actually damage the plastic too. Before moving forward with the rest of the arm here, I took the time to cut off the right hand from the hell gun as I wanted this weapon to be held in a more relaxed pose down by the model side and have the right arm holding something else. I try to be careful here not to lose too much detail by using a sharp blade and cutting slowly, but of course there was some detail loss. If you're doing something similar, don't worry about this though, as there are ways to cover it up and hide it, as I'll show you later. Moving back to the arm, I next drilled another hole into the torso, and then cut the paper clip to length and fit it into this hole. I made sure to cut this a little longer than I thought I would need, as once again, it's far easier to remove material than add it back on. After the super glue had dried, I just needed to bend the arm into the rough position I wanted it to be, and this part was pretty much done. I do need to apologize for the terrible videography here, as I kept moving my model out of frame, but hopefully you can see enough here to get a sense of what I'm doing. I know a lot of you out there might be a little bit weary of using green stuff, when it comes to something like sculpting an arm, but I promise you this is actually easier than it looks and I have no doubt you can do something that looks good no matter your skill level. To start with, I simply take some green stuff and wrap it around the paperclip armature from before. At this point, I'm really not concerned about getting the folds in the fabric or making it even look close to correct, but instead, I just wanna get the basic shape down and make sure I have enough green stuff here. Once the basic shape is complete, I used this silicone clay sculptor to carefully sculpt some folds in the fabric, especially around the elbow. It's okay though if these aren't perfect here, as really, it's just an arm and no one will ever notice it that closely as long as it looks roughly correct and blends into the rest of the model. I then attach the shoulder pad I hauled out before, and this repose is pretty much done. I'm pretty happy with how this model is turning out, but there's really not much that sets it apart from its Imperial counterpart besides the Aquila I removed earlier. The first thing I did to remedy this was to add some scraps of flayed flesh on the gun and shoulder pad by just taking a small sausage of green stuff and carefully pressing it into place. I then added a small hole at the top to represent some kind of nail hole or fastener to the armor underneath, 
and it's pretty much done. I like these a lot, as they help cover up some of the wonky sculpting on the arm, as well as where I cut the hand off the gun from before. They're also pretty cool, I think, as they mimic the Imperial Purity Seals, but in a far more corrupted and twisted way. Perfect for a Servant of the Dark Gods. I did hit a slight snag here, though, and that's that the cabling between the backpack and the gun no longer lined up correctly after this repose. To fix this, I figured it'd be easier to cut the cable off the backpack and then clip it down to length, being careful to never cut off too much at once and dry fitting along the way to ensure the proper fit. Moving on to the head, I could have simply used the basic Karaskin helmet from the kit, but as this was going to be the focal point of the model, I wanted to do something a bit more ambitious and chaotic, so I decided to swap out the face completely. For this, I used one of the heads from the new Cultless Jackal kit from the World Eaters range, as I just love the half face mask and the gas canister strapped into the mouth. Of course though, the biggest problem here is that this head is, well, a complete head, and I just needed the face. So of course I got to cutting. I started off by using my clippers to cut off the vast majority of the back of the head. When doing this, there's a couple things to keep in mind though. And that is one, make sure your cuts are aligned nicely and take your time here. And two, also make sure that the flat part of your clippers faces towards the front of the head as the back angled part will mangle whatever it's cutting. Once the face was removed, I needed to cut off the forehead as it would be covered up by the helmet. When doing this, and all the cuts for this face swap, I'd highly recommend that you take your time here and cut less than you think you'll need, as once again, it's always far, far easier to remove material than add it back in later on. After that, it was really just a matter of carefully cutting and trimming off small bits of plastic and constantly dry fitting to ensure that this face plate slotted right into the face mask of the Kerosene helmet. A tedious process for sure, one that I think looks really good and is worth the effort. No self-respecting, corn-worshipping scumbag would be complete without carrying at least one skull into battle, and on this model, I tried a few different places to attach one or more. I really like using these skulls from the Beast of Chaos Gorgon kit, as they already have leather straps sculpted looping through the eyes and attaching to a braid to tie onto something. I ran into an issue here though tying these off to the belt, as I'd expect the weight of the skull would push down and cause folds in this fabric here. But because, well, these are plastic models, they really couldn't push against the material as you would expect in real life. I also tried out a pose where he was holding a bunch of these skulls above his head using the straight plasma gun arm, but this also looked a bit weird as I couldn't really get my head around why he would have this many skulls carried on leather lashes into battle. I know I'm a bit OCD, but I find the idea of him putting down these skulls mid-fight to go and chase down the enemy and pick them back up just seems ridiculous. What do you think though? Should I left the model the way it was with the skulls above his head or was it a bit too much and had to go? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Instead, I ripped this arm off and gave him a dagger from the Gene Stealer Cult Neophyte Hybrid Kit by doing a simple hand swap. This pose makes a lot more sense to me and like how it ties into the flesh scraps hanging out the rest of his armor, is I can easily imagine this knife being a ritual blade used to take trophies from his defeated enemies. The model is coming along pretty nicely, but I still feel like it's missing something that marks it out as a true chaos model as opposed to just an imperial one. So I decided to go with a classic chaos trope of a spike sticking out of a piece of armor. To do this, I simply drilled a hole into the shoulder pad, cut around the edges with a sharp exacto knife to get a little bit of a distressed look, and then used a horn from one of the Plague Bearer skulls from the Citadel Skull Kit. This is a simple but effective way to make your Chaos model stand out and to carry over some of the aesthetic from the normal Chaos range into your conversions. Even after adding the spike, the model still wasn't chaotic enough for me, and I thought it'd be good to add a few more trophies and trinkets across his chest where the armor is kind of blank so far. The right arm holding the dagger was kind of in the way here though, so I first snapped it off before adding a corn symbol that I cut off of a chain sword from the Jackal kit as well. Once that was glued on, I sculpted one more scrap of torn flesh, as well as an anchor hook for the cornet icon to attach to the chest. Then I glued a skull on a longer piece of leather to the back belt and finally glued the knife arm back onto the model. 
For the final detail of this model, I sculpted a small scrap of fur fastened to the shoulder pad. This wasn't that difficult, but involved a few steps, starting with flattening some green stuff across the shoulder pad, and then gently prodding it into shape with a clay silicone shaper. I wanted it to appear if the fur was kind of just stable to the shoulder pad and not really fastened too securely, so I made sure that the highest points were the edges where the fasteners would be, and the rest of it was kind of flopping down. I also sculpted a small lip at the top to represent the fur that's been folded over and showing the leather on the backside. To make the fur texture, all I really did was take a pointed sculpting tool and drag it downwards in a kind of chaotic manner to represent scraps of fur and matted, kind of tangled up mess of hair. With that done, the model was pretty much finished and I was able to move on to the base, which I wanted to do in an urban rubble scheme. I'm not going to get too much into detail on how I made these bases, but all in all, I really just took some epoxy sculpt, pressed into the base, and then pressed some 3D printed Urban Rubble basing bits from Epic Basing into that. Originally, I'd planned to film the entire process of painting this model for the video, but I got kind of carried away and ended up not recording most of it. So without further ado, let's jump straight to the reveal. I had an absolute blast creating this kit bash, and I want to give a big shout out to Travis for inspiring the idea as well as providing me with a base model to bring it to life. I also wanted to thank you for your continued support. All of your comments, views, and encouragement go a long way in motivating me to continue putting out content. I'm also working on a patron currently, which I'll be announcing in the next few weeks. I have a bunch of cool rewards and exclusive merch lined up, so watch this space. If you want to see even more Trader Guard Conversion Madness, I have a series of videos up on how I convert my Terrence Legion army that I think you'll really enjoy, which you can watch right here. See you over there!